Hey everyone, thank you for tuning in. You're currently watching the Self-Improvement Sunday Drawing Group here at Reinventing the Tattoo, uh, where we go through and we try to work on certain skills and talk about tattoos in order to help us all improve what we do day to day. This is a live stream. Uh, oh, hold on, I'm getting an echo, hold on. Sorry folks, technical difficulties. Gotta love it. Okay, much better. There we go. This is a live stream started on Sunday, April 10th. And if this is working for you, please let us know in the comments or chat while the streams are going out to different places. I'm gonna let you know a little bit about what you are watching. Um, so in this group, every Sunday, we try to go through and try to work on different things uh, sometimes we talk about tattoo business aspects. Sometimes we talk about stencil hacks. Uh, we're always working on projects. We're always striving to improve whatever it is that we're doing, uh, regardless of what it may be. And uh, as always, welcome to Guy Aitchison's Reinventing the Tattoo Community, where tattooers, apprentices, collectors, and the curious are encouraged to join in these live streams, real world events, share and inspire and ultimately create better art and tattoos together. We beam out nearly every day and with your help have evolved into a quality network of amazing live and on-demand tattoo and art shows that have all been receiving rave reviews. This is found on both app stores, the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store. And you might be beaming in live from YouTube or Facebook, or maybe you're watching one of the replays on the Roku channel, reinventingthetattoo.com slash Roku, by the way. Um, or you can listen in all the usual places on the Apple podcast, Spotify podcasts, um, or any number of other venues. Artists, feel free to zoom in by clicking on the link in the events area of reinventingthetattoo.com. If it's your first time zooming into Reinventing the Tattoo, you could, lim you could win a limited run t-shirt. Hmm, who doesn't love free stuff? But you can always get the latest event schedule and notifications so you don't miss any sessions that you might want to attend or watch. Um, you can get all of those at reinventing247.com. So if you want to recommend these amazing shows to your friends and colleagues, or if it's 2 a.m. in the morning and you want tattoo shows to watch instead of Netflix, there's 10 plus channels of tattoo reality TV, unfortunately. Yeah. So you can find all of that at reinventingthetattoo.com. From there, you can link out to just about every other place. Once again, if this is working for you, let us know in the comments and the chat, and please tag a friend who loves tattoos. We have a couple of weekly staple shows we always encourage people to tune into, starting on Sundays with the Self-Improvement Sunday Drawing Group with me, Jason Leeser. And that is followed on Mondays at 11 a.m. with the Tattoo Weekly, hosted by Lauren Gregory, Jake Meeks, and Gabe Ripley. Mondays at 9 p.m., we have a subscribers exclusive drawing group with Guy Aitchison himself. Tuesdays at 10 a.m., we have a Tuesday Fields drawing group with Ricardo Sordovan, very good friend of mine and extremely talented artist and tattooer. Wednesdays at noon, we have the Tattoo Now show with Gabe Ripley, where we discuss some of the more business aspects of tattooing. Thursdays at 12 noon, we have the Tattoo Collecting Podcast with Fawn Baker and Jordan Ruckus. Uh, it's always great to hear different stories that people have when they, you know, of them getting tattooed. We also have a number of real world events coming up, such as April 11th through 14th. Wow, that's tomorrow. Uh, April 11th through 14th, we have the Inspiring Tours in New Hampshire with Sean Berber and Nick Baxter. Um, while this coming one is full up, you can always get on the waiting list for the next one by going to inspiring.tours. May 20th through 22nd uh, of 2022, we will all be in Hell City, Columbus, Ohio. So you can check us out at hellcity.com. Um, I'll be there working in the painting room so doing some live painting. June 10th through 12th, uh, there is Ink Mania 
with Phil Holt and Stefano in person. Guy will be beaming in and F Frank Linatra and a few other artists will be having amazing seminars. Um, we have the Rubber City Tattoo Invitational in Akron, Ohio with Tony Urbanic. In August, we will be at the House City Phoenix, Arizona convention. Um, and there's a possibility we might be at the Richmond Tattoo Convention in October. We'd like to go through and take a quick minute to thank some of our sponsors and the people that make this happen, such as Raw Pigments, an ink company that's tapping into the source, rawpigments.co. Um, I've been incorporating a lot of these into my own personal color lineup and absolutely love them. They remind me a lot more of the old school powder-based pigment. Uh, so if that's what you're used to, you're, you're absolutely going to love these. WorldTattooEvents.com, the largest, most comprehensive resource for tattoo events worldwide. They're constantly updating as a lot of conventions are still getting rescheduled and postponed like crazy. So if you want the latest in convention or event information, go to WorldTattooEvents.com. Also, d -Lies Pro, also known as Dermalize in the rest of the world, protect your art. If you're still using Saran Wrap, it's probably time to step your game up. Um, feel free to do a Google search of d -Lies Pro and watch videos of tattooers to see what it's about. Also, Tattoo Now, technology for tattooers, the leading edge in SEO and professional development for tattooers of all levels and they're now accepting new clients. So if you're really trying to reach a wider clientele base and you really wanna start doing the tattoos that you want to do, as opposed to whatever walks through the door, reach out to Tattoo Now. These are the people that will help you get on the right track. And of course, this wouldn't be reinventing the tattoo without Guy Aitchison. Thank you very much. He is the founder and inspiration behind reinventing the tattoo. You can go to GuyHison.com to pick up copies of his Biomech Encyclopedia, his DVDs. He's got a couple of custom coil machines, very limited edition, um, as well as original paintings, all for sale at GuyHison.com. I uh, would also like to go through and give a quick shout out and thank you to two of our affiliates, the Fireside Tattoo Network with Jake Meeks and the Apprenticeship Diaries with Amy Nichols two very good friends of mine, uh, both of which are absolutely incredible with the amount of information that they provide out to everyone. So thank you guys very, very much. Uh, we ask that if you do like the content that you see today, please go through and post a positive review, you know, make a comment on the channels, like and subscribe, uh, you know, help us get the word out a little bit. Also, if you would like to host a Reinventing the Tattoo event, so you could be sitting in my chair. Um, or if you want to sponsor a spot in the community, uh, or if you're looking for a critique, please email management at reinventingthetattoo.com. So let's get this show on the road. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, let's do here. Uh, wait. There we go. Much better. Uh, today we've got Medusa on with us. Medusa, you can pop in and say hi now. There you go. Hi now. Hey, hey. <laughs> oh, we've got a couple of people making some comments in the uh, Facebook chat. Uh, let's see what we got here. We've got um, someone beaming in from, looks like Greece. How's it going? Uh, we've got, hey, tuning in from New Jersey. Hey, Michelle. Uh, tuning in from Ponce de Leon, Florida. Hey, how's it going? Uh, got a couple other people in here as well. Uh, looks like R. Borman. What's up? What's up? Cool. If you guys ever have any questions or if there's something you want us to discuss while we're on here today, please, by all means, feel free, go through and make a comment. We'll be happy to, uh, to address whatever it is you want us to talk about. Ask me Otherwise, anything. I dare you. 
Yeah, we don't want to know your answers sometimes. <laughs> oh, well. I mean, they're very unique and creative answers. I'll give you that. Hide over here. Don't hide. Don't hide. Any input is valuable input. Remember that. <laughs> ah. All right. So I know what I'm working on today. I know what projects I'm working on. What are you working on, Medusa? I am finishing up some details on an upper uh, back piece. Uh, it's a cover up. I was like a 90s tribal that didn't stand the test of time. Wait, wait, wait. What do you who doesn't love 1990s tribal? I mean, uh, who we doesn't all love, want to look like Blade? Okay. I mean, I want 90s tribal from head to toe, but also uh, sometimes it's not executed very well. You know, the lines blur over time. If there's not enough negative space, it just ends up looking like one big black blob. And then granted, you know, 20, 30 years later, it's uh, faded enough in the sun to become a light gray blob. And now I get to put something different over it. So I'm pretty excited. And, you know, maybe we'll do some more. Maybe I'll throw in some uh, little wisps of uh, uh, homage to a 90s tribal in the background. We'll see. There you go. Uh, I'm trying to uh, tune in all the fine line details and I'm getting a little carried away and pretty much reworking the whole thing. But I'm on a roll here and uh, I'm going to do it. I'm just going to do it. Do it. Why not? I'm going to trust my gut this time. Looks like um, Seth Mushrush has joined us. What's going on, Seth? What's going on, guys? How are you? Doing well. Doing well. Good, Where are you man. beaming in from today? Uh, Baker Street. This is the shop in media. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. What are you guys working on? Uh, me, I'm thumbnailing a couple ideas of, um, I have a couple of like vintage oval frames with like the bubble glass. So I'm yeah. trying to like thumbnail some ideas to, uh, as far as like what I want to do for my next painting. Cause I already nice. scraped off all the images on the inside of the glass. And, um, now I just have to kind of go through and figure out what I want to put behind the glass. Awesome. Move this oh. over. What do you got going on, Medusa? I'm working on um, a Halloween inspired upper back piece cover up thing. Nice. Um, oh, speaking of bubble, a vintage bubble glass frames, uh, I wanted to tell you earlier, I have one but it is occupied with the baby picture of my great grandmother that I'm named after. So I can't do anything with it. But the Your next time my grandmother find... was named Medusa, you know it. That's awesome. Yeah. Men, men man eating destruction runs in the bloodline. Apparently uh, this is a, this is a pretty significant, um, long lasting line of gorgons in my family so no. nice so ironically believe it or not funny story i was actually named after jason from jason and the argonauts because mm. my dad's a huge like mythology nerd so yeah nice all that, what's that guy's name the artist that did all that stop motion stuff He's fantastic he did like clash of the titans uh sinbad jason and the argonauts yeah uh, I have no idea, to be honest with you. That stuff is amazing. Oh, dude, it, that that's classic, man. You can't get better than than like the 1980s Clash of the Titans. Oh, it's so good. I remember seeing that on TV when I was a kid, not knowing what it was and being too young to follow the storyline. Yeah. You know, you're like six. You're watching the pictures. You're not actually following any plot. Now, when you're six, I mean, if you are, you're a genius kid, but I was too stupid to keep up with that. And I think that's what got me into like mythology stuff was that shit. 
it's uh it's crazy when you go back and watch the like you watch it now as an adult like how just how it, the movie even starts off you know like the dude just like throwing his own grandchild out into the sea with his daughter it, it was just nuts and it's a it's a crazy premise because you're right you're you're only locked in on all of the all of that claymation stuff and all the special effects and it was i mean it was just visually amazing to, to look at to capture a young audience like that but then you get into the story of it and it's bananas you know I mean, the, the way to gods it was it was very um it's incestuous wouldn't be the right word but they were all they're all getting with each other it was really crazy oh yeah yeah greek mythology is filled with that man yeah. one thing i love about greek and myth- roman mythology is that um like they portrayed deities to have the extreme of human emotions and personalities like they humanize them and then put that humanization like basically on steroids and put it to an extreme spectrum so while a normal mortal experiences like jealousy and rage the god experiences like murder rage <laughs> murder seeing red jealousy yeah. in uh, to the extreme where you're gonna kill in and like genocide over jealousy yeah uh, wait medusa hold on one second seth is that a coil machine i hear in the background oh no this is probably just because i'm so close are you kidding me a coil oh machine. okay i was gonna say man <laughs> the, you're switching stuff up on us box man those are collectibles now i know right collectibles. yeah I, now these I, are i've uh, got the, i've got my my several hundred dollar paperweights laying around all over the place this um i don't know if it's the cartridges themselves or, or what the deal is but these this particular brand i've been using for a while and some of them just seem to be a little noisier lately and i'm not really sure if it's something with production or you know what really the, the issue is with it. i mean they, they're working fine but every now and again we'll get a seven mag that just locks up and it won't move it's not, yeah it's not getting caught on anything like I, the membrane still looks like it's intact um but it's just it completely like just seizes up and it won't move it's kind of frustrating but i also have a bunch of them that's so happened like, to me that has happened to me a few times um actually more than a couple of times using some using a couple of different brands yeah what i have found is that it's actually created by the friction in between the actual plunger at the rear of the cartridge yeah and the plastic cartridge casing that's what what it feels like because it seizes completely like it will once it locks up i can't even you know sometimes like it would get stuck and you can kind of punch it out a little bit or use your thumb on the back of it it doesn't budge yeah what happens is there's too much friction that gets created and all of that heat will actually melt that plastic together. Oh, wow. Yeah. And a lot of times what will end up happening is if that rear plunger stem on the back of a cartridge is off angle by just a hair, what will happen is as it's running in your machine, it's going to be pushing down at an angle and it's going to cause more friction on a side. Okay. And it's kind of one of the, the disadvantages of using a cartridge system is yeah. that unless that plunger is perfectly straight against that drive bar, you're going to have either a little bit of wobble or it's going to be in a consistently wrong angle. And that's going to cause too much friction, which is going to cause heat and everything is going to seize. Um, that may be... Turn this thing. I'm gonna store this in here for now. That's fine. Uh, that may be why um, the company that I'm using they they have a new cartridge out and they're touting that it's got like some kind of stabilization system in it. The only needle cartridge that has that. I don't really understand that portion of what what exactly they mean by that. I haven't talked to anybody from the company, but that may very well be what it may, what they're kind of getting at. I mean, that may be it. Um, and you, that's, that's kind of the key thing, right? Is that you want to make sure that when that machine is running, that those needles are going exactly where you want them to go. 
You don't yeah. want any wobble. You don't want anything moving around or bouncing around inside the tip of the cartridge, right? Because that's going to lead to either A, a crooked or crappy line. Right. Um, or B, it's going to drag the needles and thus tear the skin as opposed to creating a very nice tiny little puncture hole. Yeah. And that is not good. No. That so sense. you have to have some type of stabilization there. Um. Can we get a uh, shout out to Ricardo for doing a collab with Guy? Yeah, pretty pretty awesome. Crazy. Yeah, I, I was flipping through and I saw that. I was like, oh my God, that's amazing. It's a huge piece too. Yeah, full leg sleeve. Yeah, that shit looks so tight. Uh, it's, that's pretty dope. Yeah, that's awesome. I T said he's like I couldn't believe what I was doing. He said I couldn't believe what it was happening when it was happening. Yeah, that's um, that's one of those like, and I I hate to put it this way, and I hate to say life altering. Okay. Oh, it's absolutely. definitely one of those career altering events where 100%. you start you sit back and you're like, have I really achieved that kind of a level? Yeah. Well, I mean, when we talked about this a few weeks ago that like, you know, when you meet the, the heavy hitters, we'll say in the business, you know, the in, most influential people and most talented, they're usually willing to share information or talk to other people about it because they, they like nerding out too and, and being a part of it. But, I mean, who else in the business has been more than willing to help people than guy, you know? Very true. And he's been helping people out for decades. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. 100%. Like to get some help from Levdin Kanish right now, whatever his name is, with these frames. Try and study his stuff, but I guess the best way to do it is to just get tattooed by him. And see. Who's this? Uh, that, uh, wait, how do you pronounce his name? Levdin? The guy that does, uh, I think he's in New York now. Um, he does all those realistic flame pieces. A fire. Let me see if I can pull them off. Levgen Kanish, I think, or something like that. L E V G E N K N Y S H or K Y N S H. I mean, he's been blowing up on, on the internet, so he shouldn't be too difficult to find. But his uh, his formula for doing flames realistic in the skin is just lights out. That was L E V G E N. Uh huh. K Y or K N Y S H. There we go. I think that's him. <laughs> if you want, I can find. Oh yeah, I see it. I see it. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I'm going to go through and screen share this so yeah. that everyone knows who we're talking about. Yeah, this, I, I've never met him before. I, I've heard him do a couple of uh, live streams, but yeah, look at that. That's crazy. Oh, oh sweet baby. Oh, you haven't seen any of his stuff yet, Medusa? No. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it's it's crazy. He's so good. And like, I, like, I like the approach there where he's take, just going around an old tattoo and incorporates it into the, the new piece, you know? I am fangirling right now. Oh, yeah, for sure. Looks like a lot of straight black to almost yeah. like a, a dark burnt orange. But he's using uh, magenta in there, too. It looks like a, like a deep, like almost like that in the background that transition from the black yeah, it's impressive yeah, sure. I see it. yeah touch of magenta mixed in with the black in this one yeah. that's something i've really started doing a lot more often is actually mixing a color in with my black we would have oh yeah uh, you know just to achieve like that different type of um that different type of tonal value just like you would do in an oil painting. Yeah. Yeah, there's only a couple of areas of true black in this, like this. 
right, right here next to the candle would be a true black down here would be black. a true black right. but like right. all of this right. stuff even though it's dark right. it's like black with red yeah it's like plum. Two, four hundred. yeah like right. a plum color yeah. yeah like plum mixed straight in with like an orange Look at that one in the background. That like how simple, like those colors next to each other. You know. Yep. Very vague shapes really puts it into like a um, a very out of focus perspective. Yeah, he's so good. I I mean I should be able to go see him. He's in New York. So I drive him through there to go back up to Massachusetts. I should have Is he packing white in that or a cream oh, color? Yeah. yeah, that's white. Yep, straight up. Like, you got an ace jack. The other guy is fucking kings. Don't even know why. My client who's getting, I'm doing flames on him right now. He's checking it out. He's going to start comparing it to mine. I know it. <laughs> I was just going to say, man, watch out. I don't see a difference. <laughs> Yeah, I was I was always taught the trick to doing um, like realistic flames was to go straight from black to orange and completely leave out red. Yeah. Why? Because in flame in actual fire, there's no red. Really? Oh, too Look late for flame. that. <laughs> Look at a flame. It works for a, well. My client's got a little bit of a darker olive skin though, too. So. Well, I, I was going to say, and that's one of the one of the mm -hmm. primary exceptions is you have to go through, you have to evaluate the skin tone you're working with initially, and yeah. then base it off of that. Yeah, exactly. I, I agree. A lot of people don't do that with, with many different things. And, and, and they should, because that's part of the key as to what can make things really, really look phenomenal. Yeah. When you really start to take in your base starting tone, it's going to completely and totally change everything. I agree. Are you guys uh, tattooing today? Or are you both off? I'm tattooing today. Uh, I'm off today. Uh, even though I was tattooing last Sunday, I started a pretty massive torso piece on my friend, Sarah. Um, going from like mid thigh to collarbone. Awesome. But um, the only reason why we went in on Sunday is because there were like eight different factors that we had to work around as far as our schedules go. And it was like, all right, well, I'll just come in on a Sunday and we'll just just work on you all day on a Sunday. Hey, so how it was, did that start that torso piece, the, uh, the woman figure? Yes. Yes, I did. I'd love to see what a uh, solution you came up with. Well, I will show you, let me stop sharing this and then I can go through, I can actually pull yeah, that. Anybody off. out there should definitely follow that guy. Yeah. He's I'm actually going to follow him right now. Oh, and he holds workshops too. Yeah. His workshops look pretty intense too. It looks like he really takes time. That's cool. Maybe I'll sign up for his workshop. But um, I'll show you the, uh, the final design that we went with. So this was the, the final design um, and the final concept. Awesome. Now, a lot of the hair that's here did not get hard lined. Um, she, she was hurting through a lot of this. Yeah. So I went through and did a whole lot of very light gray lines and we're just going to start working it section by section, making those lines darker as we go through and finish the piece so that that way we're building. But now that we have the stencil committed to skin, um, it shouldn't be that much of an issue at all. Yeah, and we switched up the top portion a little bit. Instead of doing an iris flower like we had originally planned, we switched that up to some of these Art Nouveau flowers. Very symmetrical design, uh, really kind of framing everything off on the upper chest region, uh, but still giving us enough freedom to go through and kind of play around, make it a bit more ornamental than it was, uh, you know, realistic or floral.
So it's going to have a very uh, nice contrast. Yeah, it looks really, that's a good solution for the top of that. I know you were working on on it pretty hard. Yeah, well, especially for bigger pieces, I always like to go through and really pour a ton of time into it just because it's, it's huge. It's going to be there for a very, very long time. Yeah. So I want to put extra time and extra effort and extra energy into it to make sure that it looks the absolute best it can. Granted, this piece is going to take a lot of hours to finish, um, even though we are going with a limited color palette. So we're going to do a lot of uh, like blacks, a lot of very light gray wash uh, with a couple of gold tone accents. Uh, such as in the cheek for the highlight on the cheek. We'll make that a very light gold tone. We're probably going to do the heart in gold as opposed to red. Um, so that'll help set that off. That'll be neat having that in gold. That'll look really nice. And then, um, you know, the flowers at the top are going to be more of a classic gold with like a very flat gray wash background. So that's going to help set that off. A lot of the top portion is just going to be black and gray with like a bright yellow, like almost Art Nouveau kind of look to it. So it's going to have that very ornamental but classical feel. Nice. Now we got a couple other people joining us. Uh, Mario is joining us from Mexico. Uh, we have Julianne joining us from Manitoba, Canada. Um, and we have someone joining us from Catalonia. Thanks. Nice. How's it going, guys? Don't know if you're still there or not, but... Catalonia? Where might that yeah. be? Uh, it's a good question. That, I'm not positive. Uh, Autonomous Community of Spain. Nice. Awesome. You're getting quite the reach, Jason. That's great. Yeah, I I always like to try to get as many different people in as humanly possible. You know, it's with the more and differing perspectives that we can get, um, you know, I always find that that really adds to a lot of the, a lot of the, um, just variety of input that's yeah. available and the more input that we get from different sources, I personally think the better off we are. I agree. Wow. For some reason, my Apple Pencil decided to disconnect itself. So with, uh, with Procreate, what brushes do you guys tend to use more than other ones? Do you like any of those extra add-on brushes? Which ones do you find the most useful or, or, or lens that you had that you think you might use and never really do? Oh, I've got. So I actually started to go through and create like separate folders for ones that I use the most often. Oh, nice. Um, I've got one called inking that I use and it's got the little thumbs up emoji next to it. So I know that's like my most popular brushes. And I've got a whole bunch of different sketchers in here for creating textures, uh, using marker pens to fill, um, different types of brushes like this hard brush that I'm using now. Um, actually is what I use to create a lot of the chrysanthemum leaves nice. that I use whenever I draw chrysanthemums. It's a little trick I picked up. Oh, um, yeah. So you know, you keep, just, you set the opacity it. super low. And then I always have like a little bit of a taper on it. So that as I go through, I can essentially just start out and say, okay, I want, here's a pedal. Here's a pedal. I want <laughs> another little guy here circling around. And you can see as it overlaps, I can still see the edge of that brush. So then I, it creates options for me. 
as I yeah. go through and I start layering these petals around, I can say, okay, with this one I just did, if I wanted to go through, I now have the option to, uh, we'll select a different color. So for example, everywhere where one of these overlaps, I have the option to go through and either tuck it behind or move it in, in front of. That's so cool. if I wanted to have this guy back here be further back, I can see this shadow just slightly for this guy. And now I have the option to go through and say, okay, if this is behind this pedal, I don't have to worry about drawing the rest of it. I can bring this right over top of it because this part's going to be hidden. Or I can go through and say, okay, this is where this overlaps because that's a darker shape. So I know that this part of this pedal is going to be hidden. That's a good uh, trick there. That's nice. It very, for the longest time, I always used to get confused as far as which pedals are in front of and which pedals are behind. So by us utilizing this trick, it makes the whole process way easier. Nice. And just really helps me keep track of everything a lot better. So, and I'm all about just finding ways to streamline things so that you don't get confused. Because especially when drawing complex flowers like mums, I mean, I'm, Seth, I'm sure you've run into this issue before where you're just like, wait a second, where was that pedal going? Was yeah. Did, did that one completely connect or am I missing a spot? Yeah, no doubt. I mean, like even when you're, you're done like outlining a piece, you look back and then go like, make sure you get all those lines, all the, you know, where they're, they're overlapping and I mean, more times than, than not, I've, you know, oh shit, I missed the line there. I got to go back and put that one in. You're catching it at the very end. Something just doesn't connect the right way. Or, um, and so I, that was always something I struggled with. So by figuring out this little trick, it helps me prioritize and keep my lines all together, no matter I, how complex I make it. I picked up a, a little trick uh, a couple of weeks ago, tracing out a portrait. Um, I started, uh, I found that halftone uh, pattern brush. In Procreate? And procreate and started using that to like uh, I'll turn the opacity down a little bit and control the size of the dots and use it for like just to indicate certain areas of shading that you know that I'm, I'm mapping out with the you know by doing the edging or the you know creating that 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 stencil map for where, where shading changes or where surface is going to change but it's been helpful to kind of use use that a little bit also and just to kind of keep things separated a little bit more. Um, and the stencil comes out super clean. Like I, I haven't had any issues with it, like, you know, muddling together or being more difficult to read. It, it's helpful in areas like, you know, the eye, the brow, stuff like that, where, you know, you're getting a lot of little shapes next to each other just to, think it's a, you know, not that I wouldn't be able to read it, but it makes it quicker to read, you know, to look at it and just go, okay, this needs to be, have a, you know, a stronger value in that area. Hey, Seth, I'm about to blow your mind with something real quick. This is a, a little Procreate stencil hack that, um, once again, a friend of mine turned me on to. And so this is just a stock photo of a model that I pulled up off of Instagram. Um, I have a lot of those. Okay. The first thing I would do if I wanted to do something, you know, portrait-esque instead of drawing out all the lines for it, is first thing I would do is desaturate, go to my curves and make the bright levels a little bit brighter, right? Create some of those nice mid-tones and bright highlights. Okay. So that that way I can really see the difference. There we go. That'll be a good one. From there, I would actually go into the adjustments menu and go to halftone, set it to newspaper, 
Slide to the right. Adjust your dot size. Print and stencil. Wow. So actually, that's an old Photoshop thing. I didn't know they had that in Procreate. Most people don't know that. But it is there. And then you can always okay. eliminate the background if you need to, you know, go through. You can be as picky with it as you want. That's cool. Um, Adjustment and then half tone. Yeah, saturation. So take the saturation okay. all the way down so it's a black and white image. Okay. And then if you really zoom in, you can actually see, um, and I'm waiting for the video to kind of catch up to it. Yeah. But you oh, can actually man. see all the tiny little dots that get created. Yeah. And since they're all just black dots, that does translate pretty well when you you're putting it through a thermal fax. Have you done that? Yeah, more awesome. than once. That I mean, I don't use this trick nice. so often just because it does create a pretty big purple smear. Yeah. Um, if you have to wipe it off and do it again, especially when you're working with a pretty dark image like this, um, you would definitely want to be careful with like the dark background and how much background you have to it. Sure. So if I was actually going to do this as a tattoo, I would eliminate way more of the background and just have like a slight little haze there. I would get rid of a lot of the darkness down around here. That's cool. You know, and then it would make for a much more clear, easily readable stencil. You know, it's good on a pinch. I wouldn't recommend using this trick, you know, for everything. Yeah. But if you're in a bind and you need to come up with something pretty quick, yeah, this is definitely a trick that you can use. Yeah, I, I can see what you're saying about how it may, you know, kind of block together a little bit. But that's good to know though man that it's a good the trick. other trick if you're just trying to do certain areas is to go through if you click on the down arrow at the top of the toolbar instead of doing full layer click on pencil right and then that will allow you to control um the amount of dots and where those dots are just in certain areas oh nice That's helpful. You know, so say I just wanted to do like a dot pattern of the cheek and the face. And then I could always layer over top of that with the original image. Um, nice. You know, so it's another one of many different ways that you can create the, um, you know, create a workable stencil using an image or a photograph. Gotta love the uh, little tips and tricks for Procreate. I remember and there are tons of Photoshop them. back in the day, and it was, I mean, it really it does change the whole trajectory of how you approach certain things. Some of those tricks are the first time somebody showed me how to create a path and make your own, like your own, um, I guess, but I forget what they would call it, but. They go, you make the portfolios in the old days and you'd have to put, put together all of your photos and you want the consistency with each one. So there's a trick right. where you, you know, save a whole mess of actions that you were doing. And then, you know, with the, a keystroke, it would just automatically build a frame around whatever size image you have and make it, you know, all consistent throughout. Uh, so you can rip through your pictures and just, you know, put, put one together really quick, put a portfolio together quickly. It was nice. But these ones, yeah, that's a good one, man, with the halftone. Yeah, and being able to just brush it in in certain areas is an absolute godsend because that's it why really helps you control exactly where you need it to be. Yeah, I think the thing that I, the brush I was using, they call it, uh, it was called decimals. And I would just just lightly brush the desk, you know, the brush over top of an area that I needed, but that's definitely faster with this thing. 
Yeah. Once again, it's one potential possibility. Um, I as well actually have a ton of different halftone brushes. So if I wanted to, I could come in here to my stipple and halftone brush set. Uh, which is where I keep a lot of the different stipple brushes that I have just for creating like slight dot patterns. And you can go through and just use that. That works well to just mark out different areas. And you can always increase or decrease the number of dots and the size of them and all that stuff. Um, awesome. I've got some that are basically repeating halftone patterns. <laughs> You know, so that if you just wanted to keep a consistent half tone across the board, you could do that. Yeah, there you go. Nice. It's not going to work based off of the image itself and where the dots are, but it does work in a pinch if you're trying to like really set out an area. There's also stippling. You can always go through and create some nice stipple effects and give it a grain. This is once again, brush talk. I love it. Yeah. Well, there's all types of little procreate tips, tricks, and hacks. You know, using a stipple brush is great if you're working on in like a portrait esque kind of stuff because you can go through and, you know, create a nice dotted field which will give you the value that you need when you create that stencil. So you can block in different areas of value and anywhere where there's less dots, it's just going to create a, a lighter area of stencil. The trick is argue. getting your stipple and half tone brushes at the right size. I would, uh, I would argue that Procreate itself outside of the rotary machine and these, these pens, probably one of the most or the battery packs you know that just the whole setup procreates it'd be one of the most game-changing things to happen in the tattoo industry i mean they, we had photoshop before but now it's way way faster on procreate so many shortcuts and it relates a little more directly to tattooing you know i feel the process absolutely and if i ever have something that i'm kind of questioning as far as um you know, like, how am I going to go through and execute this? What would be a good, a good size uh, mag to use for it? I'll actually yeah. come up to the, um, by the way, a lot of the, these brush sets that I have are from a company called Tattoo Smart. Oh, yeah. Uh, Russ. Run by Russ Abbott. Yeah, fantastic. Um, I got to meet and talk with Russ about a whole bunch of stuff uh, when I was at the Explorer conference. And it was enlightening to say the least yeah yeah he's he's uh written a lot of really interesting things lately um just about the business end of it itself and uh it's been it's it's cool it's really refreshing to read he's had some great questions too like on his site taking like surveys and stuff and which is very interesting <laughs> So this is one thing I love about, uh, he has a brush set out called the needle set. And this is one of the brushes from the needle set. And this is a uh, seven mag soft edge. Oh. And it's creating like a little bit of a stipple dot pattern. Yeah, look at that. that but it's working right along the ways like a mag would. So, you know, if you do smaller, tight, consistent circles and you really press right. down, it's really going to give you a good, oh. solid area. Can but you if turn you it keep on it side to get like angles and stuff? I mean, not really. Uh, you can a little bit. So, by default, depending on how you're holding it, it's going to give you a different, um, it's going to give you like a different profile to it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Cause like that's more face on. Um, For like if I'm holding, or... yeah, if I'm holding my pencil at a different angle, it's going to give me more of like the side, like I'm using the soft side of it. Okay. Like the soft edge of it. 
but it's cool because he he went through and he set it up so that depending on the angle that you're holding your brush it's actually going to create a lighter uh dot pattern almost like you would if you were just barely touching the skin and if you hunker down too hard and press too hard, and you'll actually see a little bit of a gray fuzz in there for a blowout. Oh, <laughs> look at that. That's cool. That's really neat. So he, he really put some thought into this. Yeah. You know, but once again, this is one of those things where it was never really intended for this purpose. But you can it can be used for this purpose. So that you can kind of go through and create a basically a stipple or a half tone pattern for printing anything out. It was never intended for that, but it does work pretty well. It's cool. Repurposing. Granted, that does also mean that you're going to have to sit there and basically do the tattoo digitally first. Right. Probably a little time prohibitive. Yeah, but I mean, as you can tell, it's going pretty, like I'm moving pretty quick. If you need to fill in a bigger area, you just go with a bigger brush. Nice. Go with like the 17 soft edge instead. You know, if you don't like a spot, you erase it. But it's a good way to go through and do like a virtual tattoo. Yeah. So that you can kind of see how you're, how you're doing, see what you need to focus on or what size brush it, like what size mag you might want to use for different things. Yeah, that's good for needle selection. That's really good. Yeah, I'll, I'll use that sometimes when I'm drawing out designs to go through and basically say, okay, if I need to finish up some line weight to something, like say I wanted to go through and draw, I wanted to go through and, you know, draw the outlines for this stock photo, but I wanted to make sure that I was using the right kind of liner for it. Like if I went through with like a seven, okay, what's the line weight going to be on this? All right. That's going to be a little thick. Or if I really wanted to go super bold, maybe I should go up to like a traditional nine. That'll give me a better line weight. Oh, nice. You know, and if I use the traditional nine there, Maybe I can go through with like a bug pin three here. For the mouth and the nose, and then that'll keep that super fine. You know, so it can really help you figure out in advance what I'm gonna need to use in order to achieve the look I'm going for. So it can be a lot of fun. You can sit down, have people that are still learning that still want to get a better idea of what's my line weight contrast going to be if I use a three liner, right? You know, versus what's it going to look like if I use a 15 round shader, right? For some of these bigger, bold lines. You know, what's it going to, what's it going to actually look like? I mean, that would be a nice line weight contrast to me. Super big and bold on the perimeter, super tiny on the inside. Boom. There we go. Sizes aren't always perfectly accurate, but you know, it, it can be very helpful and very useful. What are you guys using for a uh, solid black when you're tattooing? Really or like if you need something really dark, whatever. I, I got all of them. I, I just dip into a little bit of Medusa's soul. 
<laughs> and I mean, that's that's dark enough that it can blot out the sun, you know, at high noon. None so, more. Where's I mean, the it's lie? hard to get, though. She only sells a little bit of it at a time, but it is the blackest of all black. A limited supply. Very limited. Exclusive, uh, exclusive deals. What? Passed out once in a blue moon. Right. Only to those willing to sacrifice the most. Um, dude, I'm uh, just sitting back here learning so many tricks that I just I would not have thought of that, especially the halftone trick. Oh, my goodness. I can't believe nobody's told me that. Nobody's shown me. I've never seen anybody do it. Well, now you have. I'm so excited to try that. I'll, um, um, Seth, by yeah. the way, uh, Gabe says hello from New Hampshire. Seth, are you stopping by on Tuesday? Um, I cannot make it up there on Tuesday. Um, just because of everything I told him that I got going on right now. Um, but I was supposed to get up there. I'm really, I'm actually really kind of bummed that I won't be able to make it, but I'm, I, I'm signing up for that, um, that website or that, that company that he has so I can get the email blast from it. Um, I don't know if anybody knows that he's, if you've announced that he's doing this thing. Uh, it's called Inspire. And uh, the shows, it, it looks like he's putting together a lot of, you know, tattoo education. Okay. Yep. Inspiring.tours, mm -hmm. by the way. Something, yeah. Just Gabe also says, Seth, turn your phone sideways. Who said that? Gabe. All right. Landscape, not portrait. Yay. Much better. better. Yeah, I'll show you guys what I'm working on right now. Right, exactly. <laughs> Here, let me spotlight you. Yeah. Oh, me likey. Oh, buddy. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Thanks. That's nice stuff. Little, I love little that transition right. straight from black to like that nice deep red in there. Yeah. Is that a is that a magenta or is that a like a plum? Uh, that is a dark magenta from uh, Fusion. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's a dark magenta and then into uh, orange. Both dark magentas and dark plums are like so versatile and tattooing. Like the more I learn about color theory, the more I realize that like a warm purple can go a long way. Yeah, it can be a great transition tone. By the way, That's, yeah. Dude, I've been freaking out paying attention to how many times people are using plum shades and tattoos that I'm getting where I'm just like, I don't, I didn't even know this tattoo on my arm right here that I got worked on a few days ago would even have purple or any purple shade. And yeah, nah, dude, that's, that's it. Sorry. Off topic. Yeah. They're, um, they're very useful. I think they're versatile. Mm. Work on that inside. Yeah, purple is one of those great tones, especially believe it or not, if you're working with any type of a green tone. I always like to mix some purples in to kind of neutralize the green to make it more of a muted or neutral tone. I like to, yeah, I like to dip lavender in with my yellows and oranges when I need them more muted and subtle. It cools it down just enough that it can really, really allow it to be a versatile color. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think I'm going to use another little chrysanthemum trick. Instead of the, the big hard airbrush that I was using. This is a, a little chrysanthemum trick that Fibs taught me. Thought you were drawing a weird dog paw. And if y'all don't know who Fibs is, Fibs is the king of chrysanthemums. 
That dude, I've watched him sit down and freehand chrysanthemums without even blinking an eye. He's just like, yeah, we're just going to do this, 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 and this, and it's flawless. Yeah. That stuff's amazing. I've seen Marty do that before at an old city, just, you know, in a few minutes, you're a full-on bouquet of chrysanthemums. No, but I think it also depends on what style of mum you want to go with. You know, if you're if you want something more like a um, a neo trad or you know a very stylized, illustrative type of mum, it's going to be a little bit of a different process than if you were to go through and try to draw something more of like a realistic or uh, Asian inspired kind of mum. Change that hand and just carve that. Be super happy. You know, so having the right tool for the right job is definitely critical and understanding a lot of these different little tricks to create different looks and different effects. That's something I have always been fascinated with. And that's why I constantly try to. Um, that's me drawing the tops of them kind of. Yep. Draw the tops, draw a dividing line in the middle. Very clever. And then, then you can just go through and, you know, maybe bring this over. <laughs> You know, it's one of many different ways to draw mums. And I love drawing mums because they're so difficult. You know, take that curl. I was going to take this curl, curve that back, bring that out. And oh, I love the little hook on the end of those. I love when people draw them like that. Yeah, I like the little slopes on them, too, because you can get, like, tiny little – you can really play off of dimension and depth yeah. with it. Yeah. You know, because if you really analyze the structure of, like, a, like a big chrysanthemum <laughs> petal, where they flare at the tips um, can really be an interesting shape. Yeah. So I always like to try to play off of that as much as possible. You know, maybe give it like a little bit of a harder spine line and then bring that down. Oh, look at that. That's cool, dude. That's really neat. Blather, rinse, repeat. You were talking about ink combinations before and, and like what works like with the magenta. I recently started using opaque grays a lot more. And Love it, they, dude. Uh, they are just very helpful with many different things. Oh, they really, really are. And a lot of people don't, I don't think people realize how often when we look at paintings, um, even like old Renaissance masters, they would mix a little bit of white and black or white and umber or white and like a paint's gray to it and then mix that in with a color in order to achieve a different type of tonal value. Yeah. Oh, we just had someone join us from uh, Sweden. Oh, nice. Man, I'm hitting all Welcome of the in. different countries today. Vulcan, yes. It's the world tour. Sorry about that. Yes, yeah. yeah, I still got to book an appointment with you, man. I got to have you do like a little jammer on me. Oh, yeah, man. Absolutely. I'm starting to run out of bigger panels to get stuff done. So I got to start you know, basically relinquishing myself <laughs> to getting like tiny little jammers. I just got one. I think I showed you guys before. <laughs> Um, Nick Panzer did it for me. He's from Old City Tattoo. Uh, yep. Did this guy right here on my arm. Yep, yep. Nice little Oni yep. mask. Yeah, man. Quick one. Yep. Sometimes it's sometimes that's a blessing, though, man. When you like, and that's one thing I always used to swear by is I wouldn't go to the person that had like a full body suit done by one guy. I would go out there and I would try to find a guy at a convention that had like 1,200 different tattoos from different artists. 
It's just because every time they would get tattooed, they would pick up a, tr- a tip or a trick from whoever it was they were getting tattooed by. So they're going to have a bigger combination of knowledge than someone that's only been to one person. It's sterile science. That's scenario. Okay. You're going to clean it outside of that. Okay. Uh. Jason, you're 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 really uh you're really crafty with the um, procreate, right? I uh, I like to think so. Yes. I just did everything everything on the wrong layer. What do I do? Start again. All right. You know what? It's better the second time around. Look at it as practice. Absolutely. Yep. yep. Better the second time around. The first layer was just practice. There you go. <laughs> Unfortunately, there is no remedy for that. There is no way to turn around and be like, okay, can I just take this and, and redo it on another layer? Or what you can do, and I've done this before, and it's a very painstaking way to go through and do it. If you do draw everything on a different layer, right? Or draw everything on the wrong layer, one thing you can do is go through, duplicate the layer, hide the one underneath it, and then take your time and erase everything from the original image on the inside of it. I'm just going to redraw it. That's usually the most um, effective way to do it. Yeah. I'm just saying that there are other options. Yeah. I, uh... You know what? I think it, it'll be good for developing the muscle memory for the curves in this. And uh, yeah, everything's always better the next time you do it. I'm not going to get worse. Uh, so. I don't know if I would say everything. Um, well, everything I do, I'm just always getting better. <laughs> Uh, in tattooing, yes, I can understand that, but there are definitely situations in life where it's like, nope, second time was definitely way worse. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right. I'm not like thinking about going life. out on a Friday or a Saturday night and getting obliterated at a convention. You do Ooh. not do that two nights in a row because the second time is going to be way worse. Oh, gosh, especially if you're not even recovered from the first time. Just keeping that ball going. Yeah. Woo. Well, it's like you hear about guys waking up at shows, having a hair of the dog and then getting right back into the next project. And it's like, no, no. I want to roll up a newspaper and just be like, no. You take your time, you sober up and then you tattoo again. And then you get obliterated. If you have a very good, successful day, have a cocktail, a <laughs> cocktail or a beer or glass of wine or whatever it is you choose to have. But you do not go out and get obliterated more than one night at a convention. You will hate your life. I know I've been there. I've done it. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty much done getting obliterated entirely. Yep. I started to realize that that was no longer my, uh, my thing in life when I started to realize that my hangovers were lasting days. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's not fun. No. And it's like that entire first day after you're done drinking and you just feel like absolute death and all you want to do is lay on your couch and die. Yep. Yeah. And that, that's an entire day after you get done drinking. Yeah. No, or two. Well, the second day for me is usually like, okay, wow, I survived that day. Okay, what's this day going to hold? And the second day is usually that very sluggish, lethargic feeling you get. I feel Um, like the second day is very like, uh, uh, I don't know the term for it, but it feels like your brain's a puddle. Like nothing seems to be working right mentally. It's all just very fluid and surreal. Yep. Yeah. That's, that's, that used, that was my sign where I was just like, all right, I need to, I need to really dry out for a second. This is, this is pretty terrible. 
but I got five years of uh, sobriety from alcohol. So uh, Bravo. the only get- hangovers I get are from, you know, rocking out too hard. I was going to say, and coffee. Try to avoid having coffee if you're at a show after 9 p.m. Because you will not sleep that night. I can guarantee it. When you go out for coffee with a whole bunch of people after the show, because, you know, you're hanging out like I do with a whole bunch of people that either A, don't drink, but still want to get together and like socialize and whatnot. Or B, maybe they're in some type of recovery, which is cool. I have a lot of friends in recovery. More power to everyone that is choosing that path in life. Um, you know, but I made the mistake of going out and having coffee with them. Not a good idea at 10 o'clock at night after a convention. I did not sleep that entire night and I woke up like a zombie the next morning. If you're not used to drinking copious amounts of coffee every day and at late hours. Listen, I am high octane. Thank you. Okay. I can handle my (laughs) caffeine like the best of them and lay down and take a nap immediately afterwards. Then you should know to get decaf. You know, I didn't even think about that. Okay. (laughs) Don't, don't knock me for it. I made a mistake and it's not going to happen again. I'm just going to sit back, have a glass of orange juice or a glass of chocolate milk. Cause I love my choco, my choco milk. I do. Mm-hmm. It's delicious. It Especially is. from a diner. Oh, they have the best chocolate milk. Oh, chocolate milk's a comfort food. It really is. Cause I'll drink a gallon of it without even batting an eye. Like when I was little, I was only allowed to have chocolate milk. Like after I like hurt myself, like if I fell down in the gravel and scraped my knee, I got a cup of chocolate milk while my mom put my bandaid on me. So now I'm just like, seriously, chocolate milk is what makes everything better. Right. No, but uh, yeah, no, uh, um, le- you know, lesson learned decaf or orange juice or chocolate milk next time. Absolutely. You know, so these are these are all of the life lessons I have learned from working at different shows over the years. You know, I'm an advocate of if you are going to go out, even if you don't drink, if you are going to go out and hang out and socialize with a whole bunch of people during a show, do it on a Saturday night. Don't do it on a Friday night. Don't do it on a Thursday night before the show. Do it, do it Saturday night. That way you only have one day that you might miss out on. Yeah, I, uh, my shop attended a convention a few months back and, uh, there it's, it's funny how you can find out so much more about the level of partying that your coworkers are capable of only when you're out of the, like, the work environment or with somebody who doesn't consider a convention to be so much of a workplace as more as a vacation with the work environment place. I remember a convention I went to was in a casino and half of us were all like, all right, we want to go to bed. It's been a long day of work. And the other half were all like, we're at a casino. We're going to drink tequila and gamble all night. And I was just like, guys, it's the first night. We have three more days. What are you doing? Yep. But you Taste know, some, yeah, some people can handle it, to. but if you can't like, it, there's no shame in calling it a night early. Yeah. When I was just up at the Lehigh Valley show, I went through and I think I went to sleep the first night at like 11 o'clock the show. I, I left the show at 10 30, went back to my hotel room and crashed out because I knew the next day was going to be crazy busy. And I wanted to make sure I was well rested for it. And you know what? I was up bright and early at like 8.30, 9 o'clock in the morning, walking around, getting breakfast, saying hi to everyone as they were just waking up, all hung over and shit. And I'm like, come on, guys, let's get in the mood. This is going to be a great day. And everyone's like, don't look at me. Don't even don't talk to me. Don't look at me. Don't even breathe in my direction. I'm hating my life right now. And it's like, well, maybe you shouldn't have done that then. I like walking up to like, you know, the coffee shop that's in the hotel and seeing just like a large crowd of very, very visibly struggling tattooers 
grumbling, trying to get their coffee and me just being like, all right, now is not the time to try to say hi to everybody. They are clearly not in a good mood. I'm going to wait for them to finish their coffee first. Yeah, I, um, I'm not the kind of person that you really want to talk to in the morning without a cup of coffee in my hand um, or tea, depending on where I am. Because if you're in England, if you're in the UK, you've got to have their tea in the morning. It's like a jump start to your day. It is some of the most caffeinated stuff I think I've ever had. And I was like, yes, this is great. I like to, I mean, like, I like to start my day off with, well, you know, the seven up big gulp cups. Yep. I like to fill that up with a um, five hour energy and a Red Bull combo. And, you know, if I'm feeling extra party licious, I'll top it off with part of a four loco. But, you know, that's, I hasn't done, haven't done that in a while. Those days are in the past. That was a joke, by the way. I can't consume I, that I, much caffeine I without having a heart it. attack. I was going to say, I've done that before, but I can't have five hour energy. I had those one time and I just felt really fucking weird. I feel like five hour, like they advertise as not having a crash. But when I have had a five hour energy, when it wears out. I'm really lethargic. And you know, when you're so tired that your eyelids, Ricardo's burn? On. we got to stop talking about them. So anyways, about those, uh, um, those, uh, <laughs> that football, mm -hmm. that foot, you guys saw that football, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the sports with the thing, the team. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Go team. Yep. Ball That's team. The one. Yep. Yeah. That's the one. Yep. Get that <laughs> touchdown and or home run. You gotta, you gotta make the basket field goal thing. Yeah, yeah. In the third period, right? In the fifteenth period, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That thing. Yeah. Go, go for team. the touch, touch Woo! score. <laughs> How are you guys yeah, doing? Go, go for the touch score. You got this. We're doing great. I'm doing great. How are you, Ricardo? I'm doing good. Just landed in Portland, Maine. That's the wrong Portland. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she's yeah. in Portland, Oregon. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I realized that on the second plane here. <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna meet up with you for coffee, but like that's a really long bike ride. Yeah, dude, totally. You can make it, yeah. Medusa. Give Medusa fifteen minutes. She'll be right there, Ricardo. Medusa, take one of those. Uh, Red Bull five hour energy concoctions. You'll be there in 20 minutes. Yeah. Fill, fill a seven up big gold cup with five hour energy and Red Bull. Be there soon. <laughs> Give we'll me a sec. medics waiting for you. RT. <laughs> oh, Ricardo, yeah, I thought you're... about you last night. Ricardo, you're attending the, um, the okay. inspiring tours, correct? Correct. Yeah, yeah, I was supposed to go up there. Oh, man. What happened? We get tattooed. Uh, dumb stuff happened with my the house that we sold down in uh, PA. So I got to follow up with a lot of stuff with that instead of going up and getting tattooed by Nick and Sean. Oh, man. Um, yeah, but um, that's cool that you're up there, man. I, I was telling Gabe, I definitely want to make the, the next event, especially if yeah. it's going to be on the East Coast. Yeah, I was really close hey. to not making this myself, but I had to make it happen. Yeah. So I, I was uh, thinking about making a future on a flashy and uh, thought about you, Ricardo, and wanted to know if you've ever done that. Done uh, any done Futurama, Futurama tattoos? I have. Yeah, I've done a I've done a full sleeve of Futurama stuff before. A full sleeve? Oh, that's cool. Uh -huh. Yeah, this guy um wanted me to do a Futurama sleeve, so I did it, and then. He doesn't like the Grateful Dead, so we did all like them, those characters killing Grateful Dead bears and stuff. It was pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> so, he, so he doesn't just not like the Grateful Dead. He he hates he, the Grateful Dead. He loathes them entirely. <laughs> enough, enough to have Futurama kill him off. That's cool. That sounds really fun, though. It was a good time. Yeah. 
I wanted uh, to do some Futurama flash. Um, that's why I was wondering if you were going to like do highlights or something because you were in someone's home. Yeah, but it's just that it helps calm it down too. Yeah. You're just some Futurama flash. Yeah. Uh, well, I was watching uh, Jurassic Park again mm-hmm. because I I really like to cry. <laughs> <laughs> I like to re-traumatize myself. And yeah, and I was thinking like, oh, this would be like make a cute little flashy and then I could like incorporate people's pets into it or something like that. And like, uh, yeah, do all the like pets and all the animals from Futurama. Yes, that'd be awesome. A lot. You you definitely, should get a nibbler in there. definitely get a nibbler in there. Mm-hmm. Definitely get the dog. Um, yeah. Uh, what, was his name? Uh, what was the dog's name? I can't remember the dog's name. Also. In Jurassic Park, I I don't. Yeah. Re- oh God, I just watched it last night and I already don't remember. Yeah. Seymour? C- no, not Seymour. No. I think it is Seymour, isn't it? No, I think. I don't. I can't remember right now. I you know as soon as I watch that, I cry and then I try to erase it from my memory. <laughs> all over again yeah yeah but no uh yeah actually i've been thinking about doing um a bunch of like pet themed Mm -hmm. flash sheets and stuff that could incorporate clients uh own animals into it like making things pretty versatile and yeah that just came up last night when i was watching futurama and i was like what if i incorporated like all the futurama pets and everything um but yeah i think that could be pretty cool i think they'd go for it i think you should should just i think you two should just do a collaborative flash sheet just throw it out there yeah i just did one with um a friend of mine out in australia where i drew up the line work i divided uh an 11 by 14 uh, procreate canvas diagonally and like gave it like a nice little border around it and everything. Um, and like set up with like a, a nice little background, like a neutral tone background or whatever, divided it diagonally using like a dotted line. And then, Oh, Hey, Hey puppy. Hi. Um, and then I drew up a sketch and a finished line drawing on like one half of it emailed her the procreate document. Um, she went through and colored that and then drew the line work copy for the other half and then sent it back to me and I colored the other half. Then we both signed it and now we have it for print. So nice. I've been wanting yeah. to do collabs with so many artists, but it, we get down to like talking about it. Like with everybody I've talked to about it, we always get down to talking about it and then execution is something where everybody's just like, I don't really know how to do this. Like, do you sit down and draw it together? Do you this pass the, the sheet of product. paper back and forth between pencil sketches? I mean, that's one way to do it. Speaking of collaborations, Ricardo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. yeah. Still, yeah. Writing, <laughs> still writing that way for the next six months. Fucking congrats, guys, dude. Uh, what was Man. the process for you guys putting that together or, or at least the drawing process for the piece and, and the communication with the client? What was that like? And um, that you know what? Unfold? That was pretty easy. That, that was pretty easy. We, we I tossed around. I got tattooed by him back in October and I'm sitting in the chair and I'm like, I can't believe that I'm getting tattooed by him. It's the second time that I've met him. Uh, the first time I went was with Jason and we spent a couple of days out there with him while he's getting his leg tattooed for two days in a row like a maniac what um yeah no right but i'm um, sitting getting tattooed by him and i'm like what's the ballsiest thing i could ask this guy you know? i'm sorry about the background this guy's, uh, but he um i i asked him if we could work on the painting together and he's like no nah. like well how about a tattoo he's like oh yeah that sounds like fun we could do that together i was like holy crap <laughs> and um i we just picked a person of, of like a client of mine and I talked to a few people and we landed on a good friend of mine. 
and we both liked the idea that he had. And uh, we just started with a preliminary sketch that I that I had drawn up, and then we just kind of you know flushed it out from there and went wow. back and forth as far as bouncing ideas with each other and stuff. Yeah. Uh, and then the rest of the process was me trying not to poop myself the entire time. So. <laughs> How did that go? Did you wear one of those adult diapers? Depends. Let's just say I took it. Let's just say it, yeah, yeah, it depends. I guess question mark depends. <laughs> question mark. Um, We'll just say that I took a few extra changes of clothes. I love that. Nice. Which is appropriate. Yeah, awesome. I was stoked for you, man. That's a good opportunity. And the piece looked awesome, too, man. It was really nice. I was Thank pretty you. much glued to your Instagram looking for updates. <laughs> Sorry yeah. about no, like, was... texting you. I think I texted you like three times being like, tell me about vultures. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I didn't see that. I was like, in the, I was all like, sucked up. Here, like this. Just like the vultures are pretty cool out there. I mean, shark and water. It's, he's got a really nice spot. No, it's really chill. Like, armor. I mean, it's like, yeah, it's, like uh, it's dark. Man. Okay. It's, yeah. It's like the Mecca. Okay. Yeah. Like the, the brain. No, no, no. That's us talking as well. This microphone's right picking on. you up. Right no, right. No, right. No, right. Um, what? Uh, that's Seth talking to his client in the background. It wasn't an echo. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh. <laughs> it's okay. I'm working. I'm working. Work yeah, harder. Man. So that was that was a, a pretty surreal moment for me. You know what I mean? Like I've I've looked up the guy for a long time, even before I started tattooing. What's I would that? see his stuff in magazines and be like, "What the heck yeah. is that?" That is so cool. Congratulations. I'm so Thanks. happy for you. Uh, I am you. <laughs> so happy you got to experience that. Oh, it's crazy. It's crazy. I couldn't believe it the whole time. And then he, he takes a break and I was hanging out with my buddy and, and I start, I did some more lining on him and stuff like that. And I'm just sitting there like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Freak out. I'm not going to freak out. I'm not going to freak out. Yeah, I'm not going to do what everybody thinks I'm going to do. Man. I poop a little, but I'm not going to freak out. Yeah, I'm going to freak out. Yeah, you guys, got, you guys got a significant amount of work done, too. I'll, I saw how much, uh, how much she pounded out. That was like almost an entire leg sleeve yeah yeah pretty much man. how many almost. hours uh that was like i think six or seven hours damn y'all are fast guy was fast guy's like man yeah. i looked up and how much he had done what i was doing so holy crap <laughs> and, and efficient too you know well, and i think that's that's one of the biggest misconceptions in the tattoo world is that a lot of these people out there that you know guys look up to and they say man this guy just tattoos really really fast it's not the fact that they're fast they're efficient yeah they don't yeah, exactly. they don't have any of the the extra crap going on they yeah. sit down they know what they're going to do and they do it i mean yeah, just that was so... go ahead oh i was just going to say i just would assume yeah. after so many years of you know honing in on your skills you know what you need to do and you've already cut out all the bits and pieces that are unnecessary in your process so i wouldn't expect anybody that's been tattooing for over or yeah over like 25 years to not have learned some efficiency yeah 30 wait 35 30 how many 30 plus i think i think it's been 30 years now you've been tattooing 33 years. years I years. think it's 33 Some, because he's that, been tattooing four number. years shorter than I've been alive. Oh. I thought he started in 88. Yeah. Yeah, that's about right. So 34. About 35, 34, 35. Well, going on close to 35 years now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I was man, born that was in 84, and so that makes sense. That's definitely the thing. You know what I mean? Like that's that was one of the things that I took away from that whole experience was his process um from the work that he did with like the can like we just took some foam pictures and stuff like that of, of my buddy like we actually used him for the study of the of the figures and stuff like that and the way he set up the lighting uh it was quick it was pretty you know he, he knew what he was going to do with it 
how to set it up and everything like that. It was ready to go. And then we sat down and pressed out a lot of the uh, major contrast issues. You know what I mean? And that was one of the most efficient things that I took away from it for sure. It was just like the process was incredible. Like, you know, watching them tattoo, of course, it's awesome. But I think the technique is what was the most impressive to me. It was just like sitting there with them and pressing out all those details that you approach whenever you're just looking at a line drawing, you know? And I think that's what helped make it efficient is that it's already it's already been decided. There's no hemming and hawing about it. There's no, so to speak, like hemming and hawing, like or indecisiveness moments while you're tattooing. You just know exactly where you're going to go. Yeah, you don't have to think about it. And it was like a half hour and when you eliminate all of that secondary thought or self-guessing or second guessing or anything awesome. like that, you're going to have nothing but a streamlined process. You know, that's something that I know a lot of people are actively work on all the time. Um, I know I'm always working on that and I'm trying to get everything done and prepared ahead of time and all that stuff. Um, just like you, just like guy, like, that's what we do. We just, we sit down and we need to flesh everything out. That way, when we, it comes time to tattoo, you just tattoo. You don't have to think about it. Imagine once you started tattooing and you got into the groove, it, the idea that you're tattooing with him kind of melts away because you're so hyper focused on just, you know, doing an awesome piece at that point. Right. Yeah, that's exactly it, Seth. Yeah, so that's ex that was exactly it, man. Like, just the fact that I was there doing that with him was it just I had to kind of keep reminding myself, I'm like, I've done this for a while, I can do this. <laughs> you yeah. know how to tattoo, come on now, man. You know what I mean? Like, let's get yeah. this together and give it your head back in the game for sure. You know what I mean? So, I definitely had a couple of those moments, you know what I mean? And it was wild. And you're right. Um, once you get into the groove and stuff like that, we're both, all three of us were just chatting and talking about like life and music and all yeah. that good stuff, dude. So it's like you're hanging out with some um, other client, you know, except for you're at Guy Atchison's shop and touching the Guy Atchison. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we hear uh, musicians talk about the same thing, like when they're playing with people, like guys that are, you know, guys or girls that are just amazing musicians. And then they get on stage and they're playing with their heroes. You know, they have that moment where they're like, I can't believe this is happening. But once they start playing, you know, just, you know, you're just talking to each other via the instruments. And, you know, you're just everybody kind of, you hit that flow state a little bit faster, you know. Yeah. Yep. It's um, and it's it's. I was super. I don't want to. I don't want to use the word uncomfortable, right? Because it's not like I was uncomfortable with guys. It's not like guys. I'm not a hospitable person by any means. It's just the fact of the matter. You know what I mean, the fact that I was there doing that, like, yeah, I had to get wrap my head around the idea of it. Yeah, and then being there and and getting into that flow state, like you said, man, that was definitely it for sure. Dr. Shrep. Well, I was definitely excited. I saw it. I was like, oh, that's one of us. He made it. We made it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, dude. I know, right? <laughs> Ricardo, I don't think you realize how many people were living vicariously through you while oh, that was yeah. going on. Oh, yeah. Almost man. definitely. You guys are killing me. <laughs> well, the thing is, remember this, Ricardo. You deserve to be there. You would not have been there and he would have not accepted that kind of invitation if you hadn't been worthy to have that kind of a position. And I'm not trying to like inflate your ego or anything like that. I'm just pointing out the fact that people, people like Guy, they're picky. They're not going to they're not going to do a collaborative tattoo with just anyone. So the fact that he he liked that idea and he was down for that shows that yeah. you're already worthy to be there and to do that. It's all something. I appreciate that, man. Thank you very much. Um, I don't know if you guys know, but Jason had invited me to go down with him the first time uh, to get when he was going to get a tattoo by him. And I was like, dude, I can't go with you, man. I don't want to just show up at Guy's place with you and not, not, like, not let him know that I'm going to be there. And Jason worked it out, and I got to go with him. And it was pretty cool. So for what that's worth jason thank you so much for the introduction and bringing me along with you man because it definitely got me out of my shell 
on that trip, dude. You know, it's what's something that I talk about quite a bit on the, on the Tuesday mornings and stuff like that. Oh, I know. And dude, you, so, you forget. I, I jump in on Tuesday mornings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, that's um, definitely the case. Ricardo, I would never have done that if I didn't think that you absolutely 100% were on that kind of a level. You just needed a good introduction. Yeah. To myself. You know, and it's like, well, I can make the introduction, but like, you two were on a completely different fucking playing field. Oh, dude, man. Well, you know what? Thank you. And um, fuck, Jason, that's awesome of you to say that. Thank you so much. Yeah, and, and that's part of what I do in life. Like I, and I know that. Oh, damn, Seth, that's fucking tight, man. Ooh, Sorry, thanks. I'll continue Bucking that thought in a second. Hold on, I'm spotlighting you. All right, there that you go. is tight. Look at the contrast in that That's great right. pause on neg relationships. Great light source. That's that's killer. I like the whole thing being in fire. It's red. That's a new take on and it for sure. Yes, that older top half. We did that a few years back. Okay. How long have you guys been working on it today? Thanks. Uh, it's about three hours. Okay, killer. Nice. Thank you. How's your client's arm feeling? How's it feeling? It's a little rough. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Nice. Very nice. And I'm going to hit mute here and wrap him up. I'm really enjoying how much how much love is in this conversation and support Jason and Ricardo are the cutest couple. <laughs> oh, now you're no, but As I was saying, like, that's, that's part of my, you know, what I do in life is I bring people together that I know would complement each other, even if they're not feeling comfortable with it. And Ricardo, you were like fanboying hardcore when we first met him. Oh yeah, dude. Big time. You know, like I, was, I, I was too. The first time I talked to him on the phone, I was geeking out. I was like, ah, 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 I'm, uh, <laughs> yep. you know, but like, that's, that's part of what I've realized is my purpose in life is if I can bring artists together that can complement each other, that can feed off of each other to create this, like, mega tattoo artist or mega tattoo like <laughs> collab then that's what i'm gonna want to do yeah you know because yeah. it, if we don't all you know try to push for the best out of everyone then what are we doing you yeah know? i don't know in a good few point. years hypothetically speaking say medusa becomes super good friends with philippe blue i'm gonna awesome. reach out to medusa and be like can can you please, what, what do I have to do? I, I would like an introduction. You know, I just want to meet him, shake his hand. That's all. You know, Radical. hypothetically speaking, and then that would fall on her to turn around and be like, oh yeah, let me give him a call real quick. You know? Oh I mean, yeah, I, man. Come over to game night with us. Yeah, Next exactly. Thursday, 8 p.m. Bring your best deck of cards. Mm -hmm. But Star you know, Wars. it's like, it's yeah. having that kind of community community interaction and community development um that i think is absolutely critical for all of us to push ourselves to be better artists you know without that introduction ricardo i can i'm pretty sure i can confidently say you wouldn't be at the same level you know no. No. without yeah, no. my introduction to them through various other channels i wouldn't be at the level i'm at you know, it, it, that's what it takes. If we all want to get better, we have to have these kinds of networks in order to be able to reach out to someone and say, Hey, you know, uh, I love your work. I've been a big fan of yours for a while. Do you mind if I just sit and watch you tattoo for a little while, maybe pick your brain about a few things? Yeah. Okay, cool. I'll be, when's a good time. Right. And sometimes that comes through, you know, personal introductions Sometimes that comes from networking, but it's all going to push the limits of what we as artists can do. Yeah, you know, that, that's, that's pretty cool. You're that's right, like the whole because, purpose behind this community, right? Yeah, dude. 
It, it was, that was, that's very well said, man. That's cool. You know, that was one of the coolest parts was when we were doing a tattoo, like he jumped into a tattoo of the leg, and he was all over it. And I was like down at the bottom with the skull and stuff like that and everything. And then um, we got to the point where we took a break and then we came back and we worked on the spaces a little bit more that we were designated at first. And then we started, and then we swapped and we started working on each other's work. And I was just like, holy crap, this is insane. But it definitely yeah. started taking on, it definitely started taking its own life on. You know what I mean? Like you can tell that it's Guy Atchison, but at the same time, I think you can see a little bit of a difference too, you know, like with the involvement of my, my the approach with it too and, and vice versa and that was pretty that was like that was i didn't want to stop tattooing my client my, my buddy was like about done and i was like dude i'm just getting started this is great like i had to re-energize you know like and so i felt bad for my buddy but we were like okay let's go ahead and call it a day i mean it took us a little while to, to get down there too we had some I had some things come up that i had to take care of in order to make that happen and then to make this trip happen as well but um it, you know we got there and Guy was gracious about the time and everything like that. So maybe uh, next time, the next appointment, we yes. got two days booked, one for me and one for him, and it's going to be even better, a little bit more prepared. So. Slap some awesome. Bactine on it. Keep going. Oh, yeah. Put the yeah, Morphine tablet. Yeah, let's yeah, get that I'm good old-fashioned Carolina spray. <laughs> hey, hang on, guys. I'll be right back. Yep, yep. Yeah, it's through those interpersonal connections and, you know, working with other artists. I think that's what really this community is about to go through and really help take everyone up to a whole new level. You know, without that kind of involvement, without that kind of interaction, you know, a lot of us wouldn't have the knowledge that we have. Um, you know, if I, if I hadn't have met Seth back when I did, back when I was still a very, very young tatter tot, like, I probably would never have gotten so far into the Japanese influence that I have. You know, I remember watching him bust out this snake and mom one day and I was like, ah, how, right? How, what, what spells are you casting for this? Right? Like, are, are you making sacrifices? Like, is there goat's blood involved? Like, Look at the grin I'm not quite on his sure what's going on this. here. But, like, that was some next level stuff I had never seen. Yeah, you're too kind. You know, I appreciate it. Uh, I'm not trying to be kind. I'm, I'm just uh, I, being honest. No, I think a lot, too, is, like, you know, having these conversations right. and everything. But, like, they're all with people that... Like I've always been lucky and fortunate enough to work with people that were better than than I ever could be. Like so you always try to aspire to learn more, but it's not closing yourself off to knowledge, right? Like you can learn from anybody at any point in time. And having these conversations is how that happens, you know, or getting tattooed by those people. And, um, I'm, I'm watching you draw this mum right now, and I'm learning. So <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I take a lot of my um my like neo trad mum stuff, believe it or not, from Clint Danroth, um up in Canada. He works at a Craftsman Tattoo. Um, I was fortunate enough to fly out to England a few years back when he was working at the London show, and uh, had him tattoo a Daruma and a mum on my right arm. That I didn't realize how big it was going to be, but takes up uh, pretty much the entire inside of my right arm. I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't have the biggest arms in the world, but, um, you know, when he laid the stencil on, I was like, dude, that's going right into my armpit. Like, are, are we going to, like, is that going to be smaller? He's like, no, we can knock that out in five hours. Huh? But looking at it and just staring at, okay, how did he do the pedals? Where are the folds? Where's the spine going? How's he putting his light source and his value on here? Where are his accent lines? You know, what's he using to complement the interior? You know, what color choices did he use for this, that, and the other? You know, why does he have this teal accent in the rope? You know, all of those things go into, you know, what I'm looking at constantly. And it's like, okay, I remember when he was doing that. I remember when he was doing that. 
And I remember this is why he said he was doing this, you know, and it's all because I took the chance, sent him an email. Uh, he had an opening all day on Sunday at London. And I was like, well, I guess I'm going to go to London now. You know, this was in, like a month or two before my, before the show. And I was like, crap, I have to get a flight. I have to get a hotel. Uh, I need to figure out transportation. Do I have enough money to afford this and the tattoo? Like, sh- uh, crap, what do I do from here? Wow. But you make it work. If it's yeah, something man. you really want to do, you'll make it work. Yeah. yeah, you nailed it. Jason is like just taking that initiative to, to say something. You know what I mean? That's, that's that first step. Yeah. yeah. Take an initiative to, you know, you, you walk or make that effort to get to that edge of you eventually got to jump, right? You got to make it happen. Um, it's not always, they're not always easy things to do, or you got to sacrifice a lot of other things to, to make that those opportunities actually come to fruition. Absolutely, dude. Absolutely. I mean, I, when I moved to Boston, uh, Massachusetts, the first time to study with artists I was studying with up there, I, um, I, went, I I didn't even have enough money to make my first month's rent when I, I moved. I moved with like less than that. I was like, all right, well, I guess I got to get busy for the next couple of weeks and make <laughs> make rent so I can stay somewhere. And it just it worked the, out. You know? And that's yeah, the but, coolest part, man, that you just like you said it's going to happen. You made it happen. You know? That's it, man. What's that like the secret, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Everybody's always asking, what's the secret? What's the secret? It's like hard work, dude. Work hard. Uh, yeah. yeah. And if, if you're falling short, if you're not getting into that show that you want to work at, if you're, you know, not making those connections that you want to make or, you know, whatever, you know, say someone, you know, I don't know, say you want to tattoo someone and they're like, well, not really a thing. It's like, okay, cool. That means I have to work harder. I have to draw better. I have to get this idea conveyed in a different way so that people are going to want it. You know, if you're not getting into those shows that you want to work at work harder, do better tattoos. If you're not getting into the art shows or, um, you know, getting good reviews on the paintings that you're doing work harder, paint more, you know, it's just that easy. Yep. Or just, talk to somebody just don't be afraid to say hello yeah reach uh, out get get over yourself and that whatever tension or anxiety or fear it is that you think you might have and just say hello man hello how's it going tattooers are the nicest people in the world but you won't ever know yeah. that unless you reach out to them dude yeah guys so cool so humble it's like like easy to talk to man it's oh yeah time. We talked music, we talked movies, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it was fun, dude. Talk about life. Like, everything that we always talk about here, it's good, good time. Talk about art, tattoo artists from back in the day. It's good times. I love hearing his convention stories, too. Yeah. yeah it's Just how funny. animated he gets about it and how creative he is with his word choices and his vocabulary when describing different places priceless i think i want to commission somebody to draw a bomber as a nibbler type creature ricardo are you up for it mm, commission work yeah, I can do that. I can do that for sure. That's like he's already bombers already got that like little face and stuff too, right? So it's that'd be fun. Hmm. I'm down. Come in. I'll draw. Let's get some stuff up. Hell yeah! I'll hit you up a bit later about that. Okay, cool. Hey guys, I gotta dip out. I'm gonna um, I gotta get an Uber and meet Gabe, uh, somewhere in Portland, Maine. So. Wish me luck. Good luck, man. Good good luck. Have a good Don't one. Don't take no wooden nickels. 
I'll try not to. <laughs> That's good stuff. I like it. All right, guys. Thank you very much for being uh, let me be here, and uh, I'll talk to y'all later. Peace. Good one, man. Have a good one, bud. Uh, yeah, it is getting to be that time, guys. I think right. we still got a few minutes left, but um, I'm uh, working on in a little bit the um, the Marilyn Monroe uh, back piece portrait. Um, uh, I'll be finishing that up today. At least not the not doing the cover up portion of it, but the uh, the just the her face. We still have a few hours to go on that white highlights and and whatnot. So a little be bit a more push and pull in the day yeah yeah for sure and then um that once that's done the next sitting is going to be the cover up on the bottom half okay so i'm looking forward to it it'll be a good day for sure i'll post later on yeah please do please do i'd love to see the progress there and we still have to figure out and coordinate a time for me to get out there so i can uh do some live streaming with you oh yeah absolutely man we'll make that happen for sure yeah yeah i know the last time um last time you reached out things were just a bit crazy but uh i would really really like to make that happen well, yeah man there's time to do all that we'll make it happen Some time between yeah. now and the end of the summer we'll, we'll get one in for sure yeah that'd be awesome i mean i ideally i'd like to get like two or three of them in but um yeah. and maybe know, I can come out and see you whatever guys. whatever your schedule is like even if i got to drive up to massachusetts yeah. maybe i'll take a uh a long weekend or something like that if i'm going to be well, let's see. When when would I be able to do that? That probably wouldn't be until July. Well, yeah. we'll figure that out. Yeah, because I can come but, see um, you really too. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. As long as I'm in town, because I've got a bit of a hectic schedule coming up. I know I've got a Hell City I'm going to in March, or not March, um, May, and then. I think a week or two after that, I'm heading up to Calgary to the Deadly Tattoo Convention. Oh, is uh, that James Tex putting that on? Or Yes, sir. <sighs> when is that? Uh, that is the beginning of June. Oh, man, maybe I get up there to that one. June I've never... 5th and, uh, 4th, 5th, and 6th, I believe. Uh, he's one of my favorites, man. Him and Rob yeah. Noseworthy and all them guys. They're, they're all going to be there. Yeah, I got to get up there, man. Where's that at? Um, I can send you all of the information. Yeah, please. Um, I'll do that in just a second. In fact, I'll, um, let me pull that up. Yeah, I'm flying up there because I'm actually getting tattooed that Saturday. Nice. By whom? Uh, Chris Dunn from Deadly. Yeah. Awesome. Ooh, nice. June 3rd through 5th. <laughs> oh, killer. Yeah, they've got seminars. They've got all types of stuff. Um, it's going to be at a a casino, I believe. Awesome. They've got um. Let's see. They've got a drawing seminar with Shane Ford, and uh, this guy Zoyo is doing a seminar. Killer. Japanese Jap tattoo artist, and he does a lot of freehand stuff. We'll go over composition, placement, and details of the tattoo process with dragons. Nice. Yeah. I'm and into that. Uh, all prices are in Canadian dollars. Okay. I've never been to Canada. Me either. Well, I mean, at once, many, many years ago. But, um, and th so the only thing is the Shane Ford seminar is the Thursday before the show. So I don't know if I'll be able to make that one, although I would love to. Probably. <laughs> My, uh, they're both on Thursday. Okay. But um, I'm going to do what I can to get up there for the seminars. Um, the crazy thing is uh, Steve Moore is going to be there. So that's going to be incredible. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Rich Hanford, Rob Noseworthy, uh, Miles Kane, Chris Sun, Fibs, Fibs will be there. Uh, so I'll get to reconnect with him. Shea Motts, who I love Shea's work. I have to check uh, him out. Uh, Curtis Burgess will be there. 
Yeah, it's going to be an absolutely insane show. Killer. That's so, awesome. Yeah, and that's uh, June 3rd through 5th. Okay. Where yes. where in Canada is that at? Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. uh, the Gray Eagle Resort and Casino. Let's see where that is. Yeah, it's uh, Gray Eagle Cas- Resort and Casino is... Uh, see if there's an address somewhere. I know it's out towards Calgary. That's on the west coast. Correct. Yeah, okay. You're like, darn it. Yeah, <laughs> that's all right. Yeah, you it's can... gonna it's gonna require a flight. Oh, for sure. Can make that happen. But I mean, I'd I'd love to head. Up, I'd love to meet you up there, man. If you can make it, great. If not, I'm going to be there anyway. So maybe oh, yeah. I'll do some live streaming from it. Oh, that's cool, man. I'm going to do a little more research on that. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a convention that you're not going to want to miss. Yeah, for sure. Like, if you like these artists, like anyone that does like illustrative Japanese stuff or anything of that nature. Um, and I know that this artist list down here is only part of it. Yeah. They've got a lot more listed on their Instagram page. But I mean, just looking at this list, it's Damian worth it. Robertson's going to be there. I've been looking yeah. at his work for <laughs> ages. Um, I've gotten tattooed by Fibs twice. Nice. Uh, Shea Mott's always looking at Shea's work for different inspiration. Uh, ben Shaw, Dave Cummings, <laughs> Curtis Burgess is like a monster. Yeah. So it's going to be, uh, and of course the deadly tattoo can, or the deadly tattoos crew is going to be there. So that's going to be James Tex, Anthony Tex, Chris Dunn. Um, it, it's going to be an absolutely groundbreaking convention. All right, guys, I got to, uh, I'm going to have to uh, bounce here. Yep, let's uh, go through. I'll spotlight you real quick. Give us a quick sign off. All right. My name is Seth Mushrush. Uh, I work in uh, Baker Street Tattoo and Media and the Gallery Tattoo Studio in Concord, Massachusetts. Uh, you can follow me online, um, uh, Instagram is at Seth Mushrush, or you can check out my website, sethmushrushart.com. Got paintings and all sorts of stuff up there. Um, it's been a pleasure uh, talking with you guys again. These are, I look forward to these Sunday conversations for sure. And, uh, you know, it's all about getting better. So I will uh, see you guys soon. Right on. Thank you very much for joining us today. All right. Thanks a lot, man. Anytime. Take care. And Medusa, I'm going to spotlight you. Uh, my name is Medusa. You can check out my website at medusaslays.com or find me on Instagram, Medusa Slays with three S's at the end. So like Medusa Slays. And uh, um, I have had a great time today talking about a lot of cool stuff. So it's great to see you as usual. Absolutely. And thank you very me. much for um, thank you very much for joining us today. And uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Jason Leeser. I host the Self-Improvement Sunday Drawing Group every Sunday. Well, every Sunday I can. Uh, here at Reinventing the Tattoo, we're always looking for new people to join us. So if you ever want to jump in, join the Zoom call and uh, have some discussions with us, we'd always love to have new people on board. Feel free to send me a direct message on Instagram at Philly Inc., um, or you can find me directly at jasonltattoos at gmail.com. Um, hope everyone enjoyed today's show. As always, if you like the content, please make sure to go through and click on those like and subscribe buttons. 
Uh, also, if anyone ever has any questions about Procreate, tips, tricks, hacks, anything like that, feel free to reach out. I'll be more than happy to answer whatever questions you might have. On that side note, thank you very much for watching today. Hope everyone got something out of it. And um, I will see you guys next time. See you when Cheers. I'm looking at you.